Las Vegas, Nevada. It's round 11 of the 2005 season as Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series, powered by Ford. They say whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, tonight there's going to be some high speed happenings at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The Champ Car World Series is in Las Vegas for the second time in this decade. We're at the mile and a half high banks of Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400 here on Speed. Let's have a look at the championship standings really in the home stretch drive now. Sebastian Bourdais trying to win two titles in a row. He's got a 62 point advantage over his temporary teammate Oriol Servia. Paul Tracy desperately trying to remain in the fight as we get set to go oval track racing here this weekend. Hello again everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin. Derek Daly is alongside Chris McClure and Jan Bikas will be on pit road for us. Derek, this is quite a challenge for these teams. The highest speed racetrack they'll be on all year. And we expect, of course, side-by-side -side racing at 200 miles an hour. Now, these champ cars have a lot of downforce, which is a lot of grip, which means they can run the low line, the tight line, in by the white line, which means drafting will be of paramount importance, just like it was last year. It'll be an interesting battle, certainly, and it was a close fight to the finish between Bourdais and Bruno Jean-Cara one year ago. Well, let's take a look at our champ car toolbox. Let's open that up as we get set to go racing here. What about Sebastian Bourdais? Can anybody handle him here? Well, let's pull out the top drawer and see the story. Is Bourdais beatable? The Frenchman leading the championship. Yes, he is and maybe might be beaten by his teammate, Oriol Servia, who is less than seven thousandths of a second slower than him in a spectacular qualifying effort. So, yes, he is beatable here. And, of course, Servia confident after the win in Montreal. Now, we've got some local drivers, essentially, in the field. Can any of the Vegas regulars win? Well, we have Vassar, Tagliani, and Tracy live just down the street here. A lot of friends, a lot of family here. Vassar could win this. He's on the second row, less than a tenth of a second off the pace. Tagliani has been comprehensively beaten by his teammate, Marcus Marshall. Yes, he hasn't <laughs> run fast all year. He's faster than Tag in every practice session. And Paul Tracy beaten in every session by his teammate, Mario Dominguez. And they don't know why those two lead cars are slow. That's a problem. And they've been working hard since qualifying. Now, finally in the toolbox, something new for this race this year, Cosworth power to pass. Uh, will it prove a point? Well, we'll see towards the end of the race. The Cosworth power to pass is 50 extra horsepower you get with a push of a button. You get it for six times in 10 second spurts, so that's one minute. The magic, though, will be will you keep it? Are you disciplined enough to keep it for the end of the race when you need the sprint to the finish line? We're going to see will it prove a point and will it maybe make the difference between winning and losing. We shall see that and a lot more coming up shortly. When we continue from Las Vegas, the future direction of the Champ Car World Series and of open wheel racing in the United States, or of Derek's conversation with Champ Car leader Kevin Kalkoven. That's when we continue from Vegas. A few weeks ago, I sat down with Kevin Kalkoven to get his thoughts on open wheel racing in the 21st century. Here is part two of our conversation. Is open wheel racing dead in America? I think open wheel racing as we knew it is largely dead. Uh, today, there's so much pressure on people's time uh, that you, instead of expecting people to go to the races, you actually have to bring the races to them. And when you do, and when we do these three-day festivals of speed, the effect is dramatic, absolutely dramatic. Um, you know, with literally in excess of 100,000 people coming out uh, for these events. No, it's not dead at all. It's actually uh, having a huge rebirth, uh, and I'm phenomenally excited by it. Do you see new teams? What number would you like to see on the grid? I think about 24 is, is about as many as you really want to have on some of these circuits. Um, Formula One only has 20. Uh, we have interest from new teams. But a critical part of what we did was the development of the Atlantic series. And as their drivers mature, they will come up through Atlantic and there'll be new teams in Champ Car, just as we've seen with a very successful Sport team. What would you say would be your short-term goals for Champ Car? I think our short-term goals are to make everything we do better, whether it's from the cars that we've got, the teams, the, the facilities for the fans, um, it's just about doing everything we do currently better. We can never accept second best. Word association? Yeah. Gerald Forsyth. Solid, wonderful guy with great hair. 
Paul Gentilozzi. <laughs> Saw the one of a guy with no hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, could you say passionate beyond belief and no hair? Tony George. I believe somebody who is very well-meaning in what he does. I believe that he, he has um, strong beliefs. While Kalkoven is one of open wheel racing's four most powerful men, he hasn't forgotten Champcar's most valuable asset. It was the fans in the first place that made this possible. If they had deserted us in droves in our first year, I don't know what we would have done. Uh, but they didn't. Uh, they, they stuck loyally by us. Uh, and then we're now bringing to them uh, the new fans. Uh, and it kind of works. It's, it's an interesting sort of mixing pot that's taking place. What is it that drives you to make Champ Car successful? Um, there are times when I ask myself that question. First of all, it's a legacy that should not have been thrown away. Um, American motorsport needs this kind of event. Um, and we need to keep developing it. It was too good to lose, and it's too good of an opportunity to develop in the future. And besides, what the heck else would I do? <laughs> You'd be bored anyway. I'd be bored. Well, Cal Coburn, Forsyth, and Gentilozzi have done a lot. They've accomplished a great deal in just under two years of stewardship of the Champ Car World Series. Las Vegas, the venue, the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400 about to unfold. Champ Car on its website with an online auction available. You can bid on merchandise and aid Hurricane Relief. Now with Rita starting to pound into Texas and Louisiana. Also, you can get in touch with the American Red Cross. Call 1-800-HELP-NOW or go to redcross.org online. You can make a secure donation that way. We'll be back. Counting down to the green in Las Vegas. In the Mojave Desert, the silence of rock and sand can penetrate a man's soul. And when that silence is broken by the thunder of a turbocharged engine, it must sound like the heartbeat at the dawn of time. And I do know a thing or two about this. I grew up racing in the desert. In fact, I won the first champ car race ever held in Las Vegas in 1968. And man, that was a good one. Tonight, you'll see Tracy, Vassar, and Corday challenge the Mojave Desert alongside a bunch of young talent. At speeds, way in excess of 200 miles an hour. Man, when these guys race around this asphalt track, the desert will come to life. And I should know, I'm Bobby Enser, and this is Champ Car. And we are in the city of Las Vegas, the city of lights, getting ready to do battle tonight at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Moments away from the start of the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400 in Las Vegas, Nevada on speed. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin. Derek Daly is alongside. Let's show you our starting lineup. 18 cars strong tonight at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Fifth time this season, the Bridgestone Pole Award goes to Sebastian Bourdais in the McDonald's number one. He will line up on the pole alongside the outside pole sitter, Oriole Servia. That's the Pacific Air number two. The second row, Jimmy Vassar in the Gulfstream car. The PKB Racing Lola Cristiano Tabata has the Bell Micro Machine in car number 21. Third row, Bjorn Verdheim. That's the Liquimali HVM number four. Good qualifying effort. Mario Dominguez in the end deck number seven. Out qualified his teammate, Paul Tracy. Fourth row, Adolfo Levine. He's in a backup car, though. That's the Corona Beer car. And A.J. Allmendinger in the Intel number 10. Row five has Justin Wilson in the CDW car beside Marcus Marshall. Great qualifying run for the Aussie Vineyards car. In the sixth row, Nelson Philippe in the Wellbox MyJack 34. Ronnie Bremer in the American Medical Response number 19 starts 12. A struggling Alex Tagliani in the Aussie Vineyards car in row seven beside another struggler from Las Vegas, Paul Tracy. A throw Timo Glock second a couple of weeks ago at Montreal, the DHL Global Mail 8. The Red Paw 31 for Ryan hunter Ray is Rocket Sports team. Row nine Canadian Andrew Ranger beside Brazilian Ricardo Sparafico. 
as the field prepares to roll off here for tonight's event. Let's show you the worst incident of the weekend, Derek. This was toward the end of practice this, last night. This is a shame because this is Rodolfo Levin in the HVM Corona car. He just smashes the guardrail, the wall on the outside. Boom! Destroyed the car, even broke the gearbox with the drive shaft going right through it. However, he is back. That is a backup car. He was the slowest car in the warm-up session this morning because he just doesn't feel comfortable. So Levine will have to drop to the back for the start. Let's get some thoughts from Pit Road. First, John Bikas. Well, we'll start with Sebastian Bourdais, who everything went his way in qualifying, but he does have some concerns about the race. He says, after I put about 25 laps on my tires, the car gets squirrely, especially in traffic, and he's not nearly as comfortable as he was with the car when he won this race last year. Now, I asked him about the addition of the Cosworth power to pass. He says, well, I'm not really inclined to use it at the start of the race because if someone else uses it and blows by me, I actually think it's a good thing. I'd like to follow him and save some fuel. Now, Sebastian is starting where you would expect, but Paul Tracy is not. For more, let's get to Chris McClure. Yeah, and Paul and his team have an entirely different dilemma. All through practice and qualifying, they couldn't find the right combination. The car was stable enough. They didn't question the setup, but it just wouldn't go. They didn't seem to have enough power, enough oomph. Now, in practice, he was able to get right behind Bourdais and draft him and stay with him for a while. But once the draft was broken, Bourdais was gone, and Paul was sitting there frustrated. They've changed the engine, and in the warm-up, they found about three-tenths of a second per lap. So Paul is in encouraged and he thinks he might be able to get to the front. The question, Derek, is how much of the car and the Cosworth push to pass does he have to use up to get there and get in the fight? And that is one of the keys at the top of this show. Can he be disciplined and make those places while he's in traffic without using that extra 50 horsepower as you look at our onboard cameras. Oriol Serbia starts on the outside pole. The Pacific Air number two, fresh off that win, his first career win, Montreal. The Intel 10 car, A.J. Allmendinger will carry one of our cameras tonight. He starts back in the eighth spot. They've had a hard time getting to grips with that car on this racetrack really all weekend long. Jimmy Vassar, though, may have a great shot tonight. Derek, he starts third. Vassar was really a bit of a surprise in qualifying to be as high up as he was on that second row. Remember, lives in Las Vegas. This is inside Jimmy Vassar's helmet. This will be a pretty spectacular view as this evening goes on. J.D. Wilbur showing the drivers it's time to double up. Second outing on an oval track this year. Remember at Milwaukee, the flat mile, which is very different from this high-banked oval at Las Vegas. The race was dominated by Paul Tracy after Vassar qualified on the pole to finish fifth. There is Carl Haas, there is Paul Newman watching their two cars, Servia and Bourdais, on the front row of the grid. Now, these champ cars have so much grip here, they can run on the low, gr uh, low groove, so drafting will be ultra important here, as it was last year. Coming to green, Bourdais on the pole, Servia alongside, out of four. Glad to have you with us. Let's get ready to go. Green, green. Is that Almendinger trying it to is. side? Four wide to turn one. Can't quite hold it on that high line. Has to back out of it a little bit. Bourdais, Servia, Vassar to third. Almendinger to fourth. Look at Marcus Marshall on the high side. The Aussie Vineyards five car. He qualified well. Rockets to fourth spot. Bourdais leads lap one. And here's the signature line. You'll see these Newman Haas cars run down along the inside by that white and yellow line. Every other car tries to follow them. And Marshall in the Aussie Vineyards car is still hanging on. Let me correct that. That's Alex Tagliani in the 15 car as we check timing and scoring after one lap. Tag, who started what? pretty deep in the field. Field. Got a great jump from 13th to 4th. Now can he hold on because Domingos and Tracy. 184, 184 or better. And Paul Tracy, that was Kenny Seawick telling Bourdais 184 on the mileage. 1.84 miles per gallon or better. Is he on the power to pass, Jan? As a matter of fact, no one has used it yet with the exception of Bjorn Verdheim. Not one driver used it at the start of the race. They followed what Sebastian Bourdais did, and that is save it for the end. We, we talked about Alex Tagliani. Obviously, we thought it was Marshall. Tagliani now in fifth place. Marshall, remember, he is a rookie, so he is still running in tenth place. Second spot, Jimmy Vassar on the outside of Serbia down the backstretch. 
Great racing in the early laps here at Las Vegas. Serbia right back at him in three. And they are absolutely flat out. Vassar said the car was not that comfortable when he ran in traffic, when he ran in dirty air. This is a bit of a surprise that Vassar can go around the long way around and maybe even attempt to pass Serbia. Now remember last year here, Sebastian Bourdais was the winner. His teammate in the two car at the time, Bruno Schenkera. They were side by side the last 20 laps. And Vassar and Paul Tracy has gone from 14th all the way to fourth place. And there he, there he is, right with the leaders. Tucking right up behind Serbia. There is no braver man in racing. Tracy makes it three wide. Heading to turn one, Tracy tries to dive bomb low. Can't find running room there. Vassar up alongside Serbia again for second. The high side. Now Tracy will tuck in behind and go three wide. Oh, he's got a good run. Remember what? Chris told us earlier on they changed the engine. Oh, yeah. Vassar gets into Tracy. He keeps it off the wall. Wow. Wax him sideways. Tracy gets it sideways, corrects it, and he still chases Bourdais. Tracy going for the lead in one. Vassar keeps it off the wall somehow. That's what 15 years of experience will do for you. Come on. Tracy to the lead. Tracy's on the power to pass, and he goes to the point. Wow, Paul Tracy in less than six laps goes from 14th on the grid to take the lead. He has taken advantage of that 50 extra horsepower that caused with power to pass, but that is a surprise in bravery also because Vassar almost took him off the road. But Vassar, boom, hits him right there. Now, is that a case of Vassar just losing the air off the front wings? You know, these boys are good friends. I, I, I think that's what it was. Have a look here. Tracy's going to appear down the right side. Outside, outside. That's the spotter. Tells Vassar someone outside him. Uh -oh. oh, there's the contact. Clear. Jimmy just slipped up the racetrack, and somehow Tracy Clear. managed not only to keep it straight, but to take the lead at the end of the straightaway. Now here's Vassar with Tagliani. This is for fifth position down the back stretch. And on that replay, when you saw that flashing light, that was the indicator of the Cosworth power to pass for Tracy. So not only did he bump Vassar, realized he had lost speed, hit the button on the steering wheel, and kept that position. Well, what's amazing about all that, Jan and Derek, as we take a look at the power to pass numbers, Tracy's used only one burst to get to the front. I thought he would have used it all up to get to the front there. Vassar hasn't used it yet, nor has Tagliani. On board here with Jimmy Vassar. There's Tag in the green and yellow. Ozzy Vineyard's got a great run here for Tag. They were just lost. So Tracy most is of the your leader. Sessions. Bordet is second. Serbia runs third. Bjorn Bernheim has powered his way to fourth in front of Tagliani. We'll be back in Las Vegas. Young Austrian Timo Glock, rookie points leader in the Rush Rounds Rookie of the Year standings in the Champ Car World Series. Started 15th, of course, only his second visit to an oval track, Derek Daly. He's gained two positions in the early going. He's had two great chances to win a race this season. A couple of weeks ago at Montreal when he was leading with a couple of laps to go before being penalized. And, of course, at Edmonton where he was very strong up in the top three late in the going here. Up front right now, Paul Tracy. Here's Jimmy Vassar trying to work his way around Alex Tagliani. Remember, Vassar was second a few moments ago. Had that wheel-wanging incident with Tracy. Tracy vaulted to the lead. Vassar dropped back. He can't get by Tag. He's stuck in sixth. How about Paul Tracy, Chris McClure? Pretty amazing so far. Neil, I know you plot these things out in a positive frame of mind, but did you anticipate this kind of a run to the front? Well, I mean, certainly we anticipated that he was going to do, uh, you know, move move up from 14th fairly quickly. I don't think we really anticipated that he'd go up into the lead the way that he has, but um, get, when it's right, it's right, huh? It is indeed. He apparently bumped with uh, Jimmy Vassar out there. Did he say anything about that? Uh, no, he hasn't. 
said anything yet since we uh, started the race. So everything appears to be just fine. Seems to be fine right now. It is indeed. Okay, thanks. After that bump at Vassar, he's too scared to say anything. <laughs> that, I mean, that was at the time, at 200 miles an hour, you don't often get a car out of control like that, having got whacked from another competitor and, and get away with it. Now, Derek, look behind Vassar. Who is that? But Rodolfo Levine in that HVM backup car. They were so slow in the warm up session late this afternoon. Levine last on the speed charts by a lot. Here's Vassar still trying to get by Tagliani on Bikas. And he called to the pits after the contact with Paul Tracy and asked the team to check on the telemetry the tire pressures obviously a seasoned veteran like Vassar knows that if there was a problem with contact you want to be absolutely sure your tire pressures are up the answer is everything's a-okay Vassar still trying to ride to the high side and blow by Tagliani fifth place in play right behind these two is Levine Levine has not used any power to pass the driver really has if we look a little further up the racetrack and we can find Bjorn Verheim in the Liquimali number four for the HVM team Verheim may be taking his final ride. He's used 22 seconds of power to pass so far as we continue to lock in. There's Verheim at the bottom of your screen. He's done a terrific job. Qualified in fifth. Verheim riding in fourth. Now let's take a look back at what happened earlier. Okay, let's go in slow motion here. I think Servia moves up a tiny bit on Vassar and Vassar trying to get out of the sandwich there almost has nowhere to go and touches Paul Tracy I, I, there was nothing intentional there but just look how wide Vassar is and Tracy I mean they used every piece of it here we go in car now you can't see Servi who's down on the right side but what's this Tracy 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 oh there's Servi moving up yep I think that's what happened there Vassar, Vassar just got caught in the sandwich. If you look at Serbia in the Pacific Air Car, right down here, Vassar now is in a bit of trouble if anybody moves. Tracy is actually accelerates forward right around somewhere here. It looks like Serbia just makes it difficult for Vassar. And it's hard to see. It. That, that certainly was not intentional, but that no. was a squeeze job, and Vassar just could not back out of it without contact. But look at the job Tracy does to go high and save us. Down the front straightaway through the trioval. Tracy, your leader, the index number three. Series points leader Sebastian Bourdais and the McDonald's number one right behind him in his wheel tracks. Now, Bourdais and Serbia have been the quickest cars by far in every session. Derek Tracy has struggled. They changed motors earlier today. That car's just become a rocket ship. Tracy lapping the place at 27 055 last time by. Bourdais a little bit quicker, but not enough to get up and get by him. Okay, but hang on to your hollyhocks here because the fastest car is the Liqui Molly car of Bjorn Vertheim. He set fastest lap of the race at a 26.9 so expect to see him begin to crawl up on the backside of Servia Tracy Borde Servia there is Verheim right side of your screen he is closing in Verheim hoping to come up with the funding to continue and finish the season there he is with the HVM team big race for this team and their sponsors Liquid Molly they've got a lot of folks here to watch tonight terrific race team they've really had bad luck a lot of times this year battle for the lead and one Tracy by a car length over Borde day Jan Bikas. For Sebastian Bourdais, you talked about that he wasn't able to get by Paul Tracy. He doesn't want to. Remember, we talked about it in the open, that he wants to follow and save some fuel. So this is not necessarily an indicator of how fast Sebastian Bourdais is. He'd like to ride around in this position and save a bit of fuel. That'll help on the pit strategy. 22 laps complete of 166 tonight. The Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400. It's been a, a huge week, a huge 10-day period in this country since Hurricane Katrina arrived in New Orleans and Louisiana. As we take a look at the top four cars, Hurricane Rita, of course, coming ashore on Friday night. A lot of damage again down in the Gulf region and a lot of folks involved with Champ Car and the whole motorsports community really turning to to help raise funds and, and help the rebuilding effort get started. And we'll be telling you a lot about that all evening long, all day long here. And speaking of the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400, Chris McClure, one of the major backers of Champ Car. They've got a big effort going too. They do indeed. I'm with Ant Stevens, a group vice president with Ford Motor Company for Canada, Mexico, and South America. And Ann, I guess the first question in terms of Katrina, the major storm, was the impact on your company. How has Ford felt that? First off, as human beings, our hearts go out to all of the victims of the hurricane. But we 
we've got many customers all over the region, and we've got dealers that live and service the customers there, plus the credit company that services the customers. So we've had over 50-some dealers that have been affected by the storm, and countless customers throughout the region. I know you're working with them for their recovery, but what about the rest of those affected? What has Ford been able to do? Well, as soon as it happened, the employees, both within Ford and the dealer network, wanted to know how they could help. So Bill Ford immediately sent a senior executive, Dan Bruett, into the region. He's from the region and on the ground immediately identified what we could do. The second thing as all over, employees, dealers donated money and the company has matched the money. Over six million dollars have been raised to date and money is still coming in to help the people. On behalf of all those who have benefited so far, thank you so much and congratulations to Ford. Thank you so much and our heart goes out to all of you. Speedy recovery, the city will rebuild again. As you watch Tracy take the lead here, Ann Stevens is a big motorsports fan, particularly Champ Car, and the leader of our race here, Paul Tracy, actually took Ann for the, a ride in the two-seater ah. in Toronto. Yes. And it was a pretty special and wild ride for Ann Stevens, Ford the, Motor Company. One of the North American vice presidents responsible for Canada and Mexico marketing of Ford products. Paul Tracy continues to lead, coming up on lap number 30 next time by of 166. All green so far in the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400 as Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. Riding with a Pacific Air 2 car of Oriole Serbia. What a boost to Serbia, that win at Montreal at the end of August. It was just an incredible drive by Serbia. Took advantage of an opportunity late in the race. Really couldn't get by. Had trouble getting by Timo Glock who shortcut a couple of quarters. Glock was penalized for that. Serbia was given the lead and rode home to his first career victory. And Serbia third right now. Have a look at these little yeah. that we showed you in Montreal. <laughs> See they, how they're clamshell shaped. That's an aerodynamic tweak. It reduces drag. They introduced them in Montreal because the ruling is if you've run it before, you can run it on a super speedway. So they were introduced there. Other people have seen them, particularly the Forsyth team, and they quickly copy them and they have them on their car also. Because another part of the rule is if somebody else has them, you can also run them. Nice little tweak. And these are the people who think <laughs> all this up. Paul Newman, such a huge fan, still active in racing cars. 80 years young. Newman and Carl Haas own the two car, of course, the Pacific Air Machine. Riding third, Tracy continues to lead. Vernheim and Tagliani fighting for fourth. We'll be back. Welcome back to Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And we've been telling you all day long about Bridgestone, Roche Friends, and all the corporate backers, all the fans who have helped with the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400, raising lots and lots of cash to help in the rebuilding efforts after Hurricane Katrina and now Hurricane Rita. A special thanks to Bridgestone and Roche Friends for their support of the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400 and Champ Car's relief effort after the hurricanes that have taken place. Let's show you the Roche Friends Rookie of the Year standings. Timo Glock off that runner-up finish at Montreal. He's got a big lead now over Ronnie Bremer. It's uh, what 27 points and Andrew Ranger is third in the standings on the racetrack right now. Ronnie Bremer had moved up nicely. He's seventh in the race at the moment. Timo Glock runs 10th. Andrew Ranger back in 17th. Ranger has really struggled. He's one of three cars a lap down. Ricardo Spirifico, Nelson Philippe also getting lapped. Tracy Bourdais, Servia, Verdheim, Tagliani, and Vassar. The top six are stable for the moment. And the top three have started to break away, Derek. They've got about four seconds on Verdheim. Bremer back there in seventh in the AMR car for Dale Coyne's team. The American Medical Response Bunch, he's caught Vassar here. Bremer is actually having a really good run here. Bremer, this American Medical Response, that is the ambulance service. They service Las Vegas. They service this racetrack here. And Bremer really has done extremely well. Now, they were off the pace when they came to the first practice sessions here. Engineer Brian Ma, uh, young engineer, but is reasonably experienced. And look, he, he gets this thing running well. And believe me, oval track racing is not about gifted, talented drivers. It is about the setup of the racing car. If you can set up too fast around these corners, then you get results something like this. 
Down the back straight away. There is Bremer trying to track down Jimmy Vassar who runs sixth. Alex Tagliani up in front of them in fifth position. Now for Tag that's a great move and he made it early on Derek started 13th vaulted to fifth in that huge scramble when they went four wide off the drop of the green. Great start. Hopefully we'll get a chance to show it to you a little bit later on but it was wild as they headed toward turn one. How about Rodolfo Levine. Huge wreck yesterday. We showed it to you earlier and Levine back in that backup car. We were told Derek they couldn't even get the right pieces on it to come racing here at Las Vegas. He was the slowest car on the racetrack in the final practice session about three or four hours ago. It does not have the underwing that will be the ideal choice. So to see Levin, who is very brave on an oval track like this, he's very good in high speed corners. To see him do this well is quite a surprise. But this HVM team, this is just a good team. They, they, they've won races, they've won three races, they've led 29 laps uh, this year. I know it's Verheim. This is one of those good teams that maybe hasn't quite had all the results they deserve. But with Keith Wiggins and, and Kevin Lee running that team, the, 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 don't take your eye off them. They just know what they're doing. Well, they're fourth and eighth here tonight, and that's a very impressive run because Levine and just his fourth start of the year. Pressure now in Serbia. Going around Bourdais for second spot through three and four. And Tracy peeled off. Paul, Tracy may be headed to pit road. What's up, Jan Bikas? Well, while Tracy's heading towards pit road, Sebastian Bourdais said his car is getting loose. They also feel the front shock cover might be coming loose for Bourdais. And yeah, we saw a piece go flying off the McDonald's number one. Bourdais has lost a winglet or something. In the meantime, it looks like there may be something happening on the Pacific Air Car 2. Here comes Bourdais to pit road. So we've got green flag stops in there early. There's the shot cover. How many, how many times? Tracy. That's Dominguez. Dominguez, I'm sorry, you're exactly right in the seven car. Dominguez getting four new Bridgestone Potenzas and a load of fuel. Adjusting the wing on Dominguez car will show you Bordet's front shock curve gone. Now that will be a major aerodynamic disadvantage to Bordet when he comes in. The nice clamshell mirrors takes away a bit of a drag. Look at this here, Jan. It's gone. They do not appear as though they're going to replace it. They're just trying to keep him calm in the Thanks. car. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. We just finished the fuel. Okay, go, 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 go. Down to Chris McClure. Well, just to recap, Dominguez did come in, got a new routine pit stop, and they did make a change, as Derek said. Paul well, Tracy got a good pit stop. There were no changes on the car. I don't think that surprises anybody. Does it, Derek? Tracy gave up the lead. Okay, you see the flashing red light on Bourdais. That is the speed limiter. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Jan? Hold it, hold it. A very quick stop for Sebastian Bourdais. But he got passed by Justin Wilson leaving the pits. It appeared as though what we had, excuse me, for Oriol Servia misspoke there. He took a fuel, a full load of fuel in the pits a little bit longer at 11.8. The red light again that you see in the back of these cars, there is a speed limit all the way around. Turns one and two is 85 miles an hour. Right about here, then you just accelerate on. There's 85 miles an hour on the way in, 65 down the pit lane, 85 back out. That's why green flag stops take such a long time. See if we can have a look at what happens as one of the index Whoa. cars goes flag around Serbia. Have a look here. Watch, Watch the top today. of the shock cover right there. See it right there. Getting loose, getting loose. On board with Serbia. Gary, there she goes. There's, boy, we have seen Wilson yeah. in San Jose. We saw three or four times this year that bodywork on the Lola's just come loose. But now he has air conditioning. <laughs> but the worst thing he has, as Craig Hampson, that is his engineer, looks on. The worst thing they have is the drag factor now that he is going to have to drag around here at 200 miles an hour. That's why he was living when he made the pit stop. Arms flailing in the air. Now, as well prepared as the Newman Haas team always is, Derek, I'm amazed they wouldn't have held him an extra few seconds and slapped a new cover on. You know what? Very, very good point. If they're listening to us, they have one down there <laughs> for the next stop. All those green flag pit stops coming at lap 42, 43, 44. Paul Tracy has vaulted back to the lead in the index Forsyth number three. Bourdais in second, so the top two are right back there now. Servia back to third, Vassar to fourth on the pit stop cycle. Here's Tracy about to put Justin Wilson a lap down. Wilson has not come to grips with this racetrack at all throughout the weekend. So Wilson fighting hard to try to stay oh, on the lead oh. lap here. You see the wheels? 
almost touch there. Tracy will go as close as anybody will dare, but the low line is the faster preferred line. It makes it difficult. You have to go around the outside, but that CDW card of Justin Wilson, they just have not had the setup right and that all weekend long. Sebastian Bourdais continues to fly and second Jan Bikas without the top body work. What's going on? I checked with the team. They did not give me the specifics, but talked to Kenny Seawick and said, will you replace that panel? He said, no, we are not going to replace it. My assumption is they don't feel as though the time lost on pit road is worth it. If you're in the draft, I don't know how much it'll hurt the car. He is right behind Tracy. Really, nothing has changed, even though he lost the shot cover, as we showed you a few moments ago. Bourdais runs second behind Tracy, third is Serbia. And here's why, on a super speedway, extra drag makes a difference. Let's say the nice, smooth cover is now gone from the top of Bourdais' car, as it is. Now you have something that's like a barn door. Boom, it stops the car. If that racing car is one-tenth of a second slower because of that, one-tenth, now it's hard to measure a tenth, if it's one-tenth, slower every 10 laps that's a full second at 200 miles an hour that full second is the full length of a football field but here he comes for the lead Bourdais dive bombing inside and gets by okay everybody throw your shock covers away this may be fast ah Tracy comes back right back on the high side there's a slower car Andrew Ranger lap traffic will be a factor here tonight no question look at this side by side it's not that right. easy to take advantage of Tracy. traffic. Clear. Tracy back to the lead. Somebody was told clear. I presume it was Tracy. And he will lap by Andrew Ranger here in the trioval, the front part of Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Wasn't Tracy because Neil Mickelwright is on the radio to Tracy. We would recognize his voice, but Tracy only loses it. Maybe he lost momentum. Here comes Bourdais back at him on the high side, minus a key piece of front body work. Oh, he is quick right now. This Tucked doesn't right make any sense. There. They've been using power to pass. Tracy's used another 10 second burst. Bourdais has used 19 seconds. Now, we were led to believe earlier coming into this event, you would have just 60 seconds, 10 second burst only. What it is, it's cumulative as we've seen all season long, up to 60 seconds, except for one thing. When you use your 60, that's it. There's no saving one second second at the back end and getting a full 10 second burst the way you could on a road course. That's the safety factor that's been built in here this weekend by the Cosworth folks in the engineering department. Let's get an update on Sebastian Bourdais. Back to Jan. The situation is that now, in fact, they do have a cover in place ready for Sebastian Bourdais, but they will not try to replace this unless they have a full course yellow. The reason that Bourdais raced to the front there, you may have seen it in his eyes. You may have seen him beat the steering wheel during the pit stop. He just was angry and frustrated, and they've been trying to calm him down, tell him we're racing for points, and they have now told him, under caution, we will give you a new panel. Leaders out of turn four to put lap 53 of 166 on the board. We'll show you again what happened to Sebastian Bourdais as he was riding in Oriol Serbia's wake here as they came up onto the, um, the front straightaway. It's already loose. You can see it's already loose on the car, the front panel. I'm sure Bourdais could see it at this stage, too. And it's interesting that it's in the draft. It's in the dirty air behind Servia. If you've ever followed a semi on the highway, how the, how the car begins to move around, that's the yeah. dirty, turbulent air. It's even worse behind a racing car, so that literally sucked the panel off. I dare say there will be a new design for that top panel before too long. Watching Tracy lead in the Forsyth index number three. The McDonald's one car aboard A runs second. 55 laps complete in the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. As Champ Car presents, Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. And a reminder, American Red Cross Hurricane Relief. We'd love to see you contribute. All American Red Cross disaster assistance to families is free. You can help. Call 1-800-HELP-NOW or go to the website redcross.org and make a secure donation. Back at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, working lap 56 of the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400. With Derek Daly, I'm Rick Benjamin, Jan Bikas, and Chris McClure on pit road. We've had one round of green flag pit stops tonight. No yellows so far. 
It has been all green and very, very fast as you'd expect. Top two. Paul Tracy in the blue and white car. That's the index number three. The McDonald's one of Bourdais, the series champion in 2004. The points leader coming in here to the 11th race of 2005. Bourdais qualified on the pole, led early. See Tracy it? blasted by him. And now even though Bourdais lost that key piece of bodywork, that cowl, that shock cover, he is right there in second. See what he just did? He just tore off a, uh, a rip off, tear off from his helmet. What it is, it's literally a new windshield. They have passed plastic tear-off strips. The closer he follows Tracy, but there's only little oil that gets thrown into the back of Tracy's car, it goes straight onto Bourdais' visor. Then if there's any dust or dirt, it obviously sticks to it. It's unusual that this early in the race, he would begin to tear those off. It's usually later in the race. Maybe Tracy's chucking at just a little bit of oil, but Bourdais already got rid of one of those tear-offs. He could have two or three tear-offs on there. Tracy, an acknowledged oval track master. You know what, in Milwaukee earlier this year. Rick, he's not following Tracy. He's he's on a higher line. Yeah. And maybe there is something coming out of the back of Tracy. Look, he, he won't follow him yeah. directly. Yeah. Well, that dirty air is a factor. We know that Bourdais was complaining about the car earlier in the weekend, that he didn't like the way it was working. It was fine solo, but if he had to follow somebody, he was saying, hey, this isn't sticking well. It's kind of fluttery out. See what he does there? Look, sticks it into clear air just on the outside. Outside still. Then you'll come back inside on the straight. It's okay. Bourdais in the tire tracks of Tracy momentarily. I think Derek, he's looking for a high line to see if he can drive around that three car, get back to the lead. Down Don't the back know. stretch. Bourdais tucks in behind. One driver who had a very, very good first 50 laps was Ronnie Bremer. Chris McClure, he's behind the wall. What's the story? Well, it lasted right up to the first pit stop, and then on the way in, things went wrong. Ronnie, what happened? Yeah, I saw the guy too late when I was coming in, and when I tried to go in, locked up the tires, and there's nothing you can do. The problem is on the old wall, the car is set up differently, so you don't have the same brake as you usually have, but it was purely my mistake. It's just a yeah, rookie mistake, I guess. But it's sad, we're, we're doing well, passing people all the time. The car's really good. Most of the time, they told me over the radio we had the fastest car on the track, so it's, so it's just silly of me to throw it away in the pit lane. Sorry to see you out. Yeah, that's how it is sometimes. Now, the, the end of the story is happy, but it was scary for a moment. The inside rear tire changer was between the car and the wall when he came in and locked it up. He was hit, injured a wrist. The safety team has wrapped it, and they've taken him to the infield hospital for further assessment. But Mark Walpott appears to be fine and will be able to continue his duties with the team. That's good news indeed. All right, tough to see Ronnie Bremer behind the wall, though, in the AMR car, the 19 for the Dale Coyne team. Bremer, since he joined that team at Edmonton, had compiled three straight top tens, a sixth and two sevenths at San Jose and Denver, and had problems at Montreal and was 17th there, never really on pace. Tonight, it looked like he was headed perhaps for a top five finish before that prom problem on pit road just a couple of moments ago. The battle rages on lap 65. Tracy's still the leader in the index three car. Oh, the McDonald's no. won. Were they trying to find a way around? Around him as we ride with the Pacific Air 2 car. Oriol Serbia second in the championship. He is third in the race. Hey, later tonight on Speed, Dave Despain takes over with Wind Tunnel. The next L rookie to chase contender. Carl Edwards joins Dave on the co host seat. We'll talk about all of that and more. Wind Tunnel with Dave Despain tonight at 9 on Speed. I'm Rick Benjamin, Derek Daly alongside a wild battle here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Second time for the Champ Car World Series to come here and run the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400. It's been a dandy so far. It really has. For those of you who watch the color schemes and recognize cars by driver's helmets, this is Serbia. Apparently it is a one-off helmet design. Uh, he normally has the orange and yellow, which is the colors of the flag of Catalonia in Spain, where he's from. A uh, friend of his, I believe, is a helmet designer, so this is a somewhat departure from the norm for Serbia, who says his ambition is to be more like Fernando Alonso, who is, of course, his countryman about to win the Formula One World Championship. Serbia, in fact, after Montreal, was back in Spain and surprised how much the media knew and followed his exploits uh, in Chankar, and, of course, obviously delighted with his win. Well, if you think about it, Serbia climbed into that car after May. 
going into Milwaukee. Took over the ride after Bruno Giancaro was injured in Indy in the month of May. And Serbia has come to second in the championship. He got by Paul Tracy with the win at Montreal. They have a look at his uh, finishes. Of course, he was driving for Dale Coyne back at Long Beach. He finished uh, in 11th spot there, ninth in Monterey for Coyne. Failed to finish at Portland driving this car, but a third at Milwaukee, third at Cleveland. Yeah, he was in the top five everywhere except at Portland and then the win at Montreal. And what's a bit strange here, you see about the, the 15 car lengths he is behind, you know, from there to there. He isn't quite in the slipstream, isn't quite getting sucked along by Tracy and Bourdais, and yet Bourdais has the high drag car missing that front bodywork. So the, the tenth of a second that we mentioned earlier on, it looks like it's Servia that's just a tiny frustrating piece off the pace. Meanwhile, these boys are going at it, hammer and tongs here. Well, remember in qualifying, Serbia was second to Bourdais. They made up the front row here tonight. Seven one thousandths of a second was the gap between first and second. So that shows you how quick Serbia is. Derek, I don't think Sebastian Bourdais gets proper credit for a lot of things, one of which is his talent on an oval. He won here a year ago. He's running second after leading. The shot cover has come off. Off, and that certainly slowed him a bit. The only place I've seen Bourdais have problems is, is Milwaukee. The two years we've been doing this, I haven't seen Bourdais run well at Milwaukee either time. But other than that, he's been John dominant, very good here. Hey, don't forget IROC, Texas. Won the IROC race earlier this year at Texas yes. Motor Speedway. A track not unlike Las Vegas. Look at this here. He is absolutely right under the rear wing of Paul Tracy. Now you don't often put Tracy under pressure. That is Cristiano D'Amata, I believe. Yep, it is. That they're coming up to maybe put a lap on. Vassar is up in fourth place. D'Amata, although he qualified in the second row, he was never comfortable with his car in traffic. D'Amata dropped anchor early tonight. He is one lap down. He's about to go two laps down to the leaders in the Bell Micro 21, the PKV team. That is Tracy now. He has opened up a little bit of a lead over Bourdais. Bourdais has slipped back out of the draft now. Damata's dad Antonio is here. Got a ride in the two-seater car with Cristiano at the wheel last night. Big thrill for him. Big thrill, but Bourdais gets lost a little bit in traffic there. Gets lost. Look at the Serbia. Begins to close up now on Bourdais, but Bourdais now has lost the toe, the all-important slipstream from Paul Tracy. There's the two Newman Haas cars right there. Second and third for the top two cars in the championship. They lap by Ricardo Spirafico, who is 17th. A couple of laps down, the Sunny's Pit barbecue car. The 11 for Dale Coyne's bunch. You're riding here with Serbia as he tries to draw up on Sebastian. And the top two in the points chase. Bourdais points lead over 50. And he may clinch early. It took him till the final race in Mexico City last year to win the championship. This year, if things continue to go well for him, he could lock it up sooner than that. Newman Haas boys are not using the tight line that they ran earlier. No. They are having to use the whole racetrack now. So it's beginning to change. Tires wear a little bit. But down along this white line down the inside is the shortest way around this racetrack. There's enough grip to, t to hug that line in qualifying in particular. Oh, Serbia closing in for now. second. Bordet will dive low and put a lap on Ryan Hunter Ray in the 31. That's the Red Paw car. Hunter Ray in 11th spot now, a lap down. That's the yellow Rocket Sports machine. Paul Gentilosi's team out of Michigan. And there is Bordet running second with Serbia third, fourth spot. As Derek mentioned, about six seconds back from these three, Jimmy Vassar qualified in the second row. Vassar rides fourth, Alex Tagliani fifth, Mario Dominguez sixth. A.J. Allmendinger and Timo Glock, Vernheim and Levine, your top 10 as we ride the helmet cam on Jimmy Vassar at age 39. See his 26.94 in the middle of the dash. That's the lap time he did the last lap. Every time he goes by the beacon, boom, it'll signal the next lap. 26.94, there go, is that? He's lapping his team. 26.94 on Vassar. 27.36 has just popped up on his, uh, on his steering wheel. So Damata continues to struggle. Back in 14th, the Portland it, winner. Right there, 20, 27 3, 7. So Jimmy knows exactly the speed he's doing. 6.17. I don't know what that one is. 6.18. But there you see it on the steering wheel. Vassar's lap time at the bottom. As we watch Vassar, the 1996 car, champ car champion, 
And Vassar telling people this may be the final ride. These last couple of races could be his retirement ride. See the top number, number six in the gear. Jan Bikas. Check with the team. They said for Jimmy, it's just a case of the lost momentum from the earlier contact with Paul Tracy. There was certainly marks on the tires that they removed during his first pit stop. They didn't make any changes to the car. They feel everything is exactly how Jimmy wants it. Again, they're just looking for that track position and the regain of momentum. Once you lose momentum here, Derek, it really takes a long time to recoup. Exactly. That's the problem. You lose that draft, suddenly have to suck it all up. See, the, these are the lights here. They are the engine red. There's two green lights on. Through the corners, the green lights come on. He knows what, what they represent. And another green light. Now he's got a yellow on. Yellow, the reds go up and up and up. Three lights seems to be all Jimmy gets for the gear that he's in right now, sixth gear. Now you'll see on the top on our scoring strip, you'll see Cosworth power to pass numbers. Tracy has only used 10 seconds. Bourdais, Serbia, Vassar, they haven't hit the button as yet. So Jimmy's got an opportunity as we get close to halfway to try to use that extra 50 horsepower and catch the leaders if he needs to. But a full course yellow would give him the opportunity to pack up behind the pace car. Jan Bikas. When you saw the six on the center of the steering wheel there, Rick, they have seven gears in Jimmy Vassar's car, but three of them are top gears. So fifth, sixth, and seventh are all what you consider racing top gears. Fifth is if you have a headwind, sixth is if you're on your own, and seventh if you're in a draft or on Cosworth Power to Pass. So at the moment, you can see, riding on his own, and that's the gear of choice. And they may only be 100 revs apart. They are very, very closely spaced. But Jimmy Vassar and the Gulf Stream car having a pretty good night here. Oh, yeah. when you consider um, how far off the pace Cristiano Damata is. Damata is now two laps off the pace. Here Tracy comes Tracy, is. Chris McClure. Paul Tracy, his second pit stop of the night. He's on the marks as Steve Moore marks it from the outside front. The tires are about to be finished. The fuel is still going in. They did not reach to the front of the car to make any changes. And he is away. 10.3 seconds. We've been all green so far. We're at halfway next time by. 83 of 166 laps going up on the board. Tracy gives up the lead. First to pit road. Now, Derek, he's not getting as good mileage, evidently, as the other key contenders. No, but the windows, we looked at the windows earlier on as to what they may be. 37.41, 80 to 84. So he's just shy of the ideal window as Bourdais now peels off. And, and he's only one lap uh, different than Sebastian Bourdais. And Jan Beek is waiting for Bourdais. To see, will they stick a nose cone on this or a top cover? They're going to go for the full fuel. You heard Kenny Seawick talk about front wing. The reason they're taking front wing out is because the car has been getting a bit loose. A lot of people getting loose, half wing, half turn on both sides. They will wait for all the fuel off the jack. 10.9. Very quick stop, considering the later the pit stop, the slower the fuel flows. No move to put the shock cover back on, the spare shock cover. Here comes Serbia, who gives up the lead. Bring the Pacific Air car to pit row. The and cycle of green flag stops continue. And there's the flashing light, so he knows he's on the rev limiter, as is Serbia, 85 miles an hour. They then come around to that line right. There's the line right there. Now they go to 65. Open approach into your box. Four tires, we're going to fill it up. Good, fill it up. The reason they tell them they're going to fill it up is that that helps the driver know how long the stop will be. So far, no changes for Serbia. Oh, they took a look. Oh, he started to disengage the fuel. Kind of a double clutch. 11-8, that's still pretty good at 11-8, but a few tenths of a second lost. Yeah, and it's interesting. Bourdais appeared to be slightly quicker, yet he was the car that needed the adjustment to the front wing. Servia could not quite stay up with Tracy and Bourdais, and yet there were no adjustments 
to his car. Let's just see how that plays out for this run. Look at these two boys still. Yeah. After two pit stops, they nailed. are in lockstep. They again. are nailed together. Paul Tracy, Sebastian Bourdais. And we'll see what happens after the cycle of pit stops. Serbia still being shown the leader, but he gave it up undoubtedly when he came to pit road a moment ago. Tracy and Bourdais fall back to the top of the leaderboard. So 87 laps complete of 166 tonight at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Tracy, Bourdais, and Serbia will be right back. The world famous strip in Las Vegas, Nevada, Las Vegas Boulevard, a city of dreams for many. And the Champ Car World Series stars dreaming of victory lane tonight at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400. I'm Rick Benjamin, Derek Daly alongside Jan Bikas, Chris McClure on pit road. We watch this battle between two heavyweights, toe to toe. Paul Tracy, Sebastian Bourdais, one and three in the championship standings now. Tracy would like nothing better than to notch his second win of the year on an oval. Bourdais in his tire tracks has had a problem. A few moments ago, about uh, 25 laps ago to be exact, the shock cover, the top body work on the nose of the McDonald's number one came flying off in the draft. Bourdais has been running without it ever since. You might think, well, that'll lighten the car. It also disturbs the airflow, and these cars are so aerodynamically sensitive, you'd think Bourdais would be struggling. But instead, he's right there in Tracy's tire tracks. Yeah, and when it, he is in his tire tracks until he gets to the corners, then he likes to move aside to at least put half of the wings into nice, clean air to get his downforce back, get his stability back. So Tracy now needs to make his way through. That is Damata again, Cristiano Damata, right ahead of him, who's about to go three laps down. So that is a night of struggle for the former champion. Well, Bourdais was working on a string of three victories in a row until Montreal at the end of August. Ended up finishing fourth after problems with a pit stop. For Tracy, this is really vindication in a way. He starts to pull away from Bourdais again. Derek, a year ago, Tracy never took a green flag lap. He had problems on pit road as he accelerated away. They had problems with a half shaft. It broke, and Tracy didn't complete a single lap. To come here to basically his hometown now and lead like this and look like he's on his way to victory, great run for this team. And there's something unusual going on here because, again, when Tracy got into lap traffic, Bourdais dropped back. We saw that happen earlier. Then when it's just him against Tracy, he's able to draw himself up behind him. But in multiple cars, he just doesn't like it. Out of turn two. Tracy continues to lead. Bourdais runs in second position. Tracy jumped to the lead early tonight. He qualified very poorly. Paul Tracy struggling on Friday and qualifying from 14th to the lead in a handful of laps. And Bourdais and, and uh, Oriol Servia and Jimmy Vassar have just been fighting to stay up with Tracy. Now, here's Bourdais through the trioval again, drawing close to the index three car. Can he make a move on the outside, Derek? You know Tracy's going to protect the bottom here. I'm not sure he necessarily wants to lead the race. He's, he's able to move around, but I don't know. Remember, being in the draft, with the drag of the panel being gone at the front, being in the draft right under Paul Tracy's rear wing is the best possible place for him to be. When he moves aside, he puts clean, fresh, cool air in through the radiators to make sure this thing doesn't overheat. But I had, I'm not so sure he wants to lead with the drag he has on the front of that car. Tracy still in front. Tracy using the extreme Boy, he, low line right down the right around, stripe. Isn't he yeah. he oh, is yeah. moving around right and left behind Tracy. Trying a variety of different angles to see if he can find a way around the index car and get himself, Bourdais, back into the lead. Hey, tonight on Speed, the Donuts, the burnout's done at Dover. The field, of course, for the chase for the Cup. A uh, couple of rounds complete now, and the field starting to separate itself. Join us for NASCAR Victory Lane, post-race interviews, and a whole lot more. That's from Dover Downs, NASCAR Victory Lane at 8 Eastern tonight. For the lead, Bourdais, high side. Tracy on the bottom, right back at him now. Wheel to wheel out of four. Oh, the two championship contenders are going at it side by side. And Bourdais, to my surprise, wow. appears as if he does want to lead this thing. But Tracy is making him do it the hard way. You have to go around the outside if you're going to lead this thing, he says. Tracy makes the track a little wider. He goes up higher than normal. Oh, Bourdais backs off. shoots back to the lead. Backs off. Bourdais clearly backed off. Wasn't worth it. Now, is that a case of Bourdais showing Tracy his nose and saying, hey, I'm as strong as you? 
It could well be. Yes, it could well be that. Serbia, you saw him again, still just about two seconds uh, behind these two. But Bourdais made an unusual move there and then just backed out of it. Jan? Well, we've been talking about this damper or shock cover, but we haven't talked about why it came off. The way they fit is down here on the bottom, they actually have a slip fit that goes into the front of the nose section. Then the only two fasteners that it have are up here on the top. The reason being, you just remove these two, you can get quick access to the dampers or the shock absorbers underneath. What happened here, they typically tape this with helicopter tape for the race because you don't need to take it off. It's only for adjustments in practice. Somehow, the tape broke loose. Once this fastener comes loose, it's off to the races. And that is the third time we've seen that happen this season. Very rare indication normally, but three times especially. We remember seeing Justin Wilson's fly off in San Jose, Derek. We were on board with Wilson at the time it happened. Very spectacular situation. You could see it flap before the wind finally lifted it and took it away. Redesign it. Yeah. <laughs> well, there'll be a new Champ Car chassis design for 2007. These existing Lolas will be run just next year. Champ Car getting ready to announce who the manufacturer will be and what the car will look like they'll be a little bit lighter we're told should be quite a bit racier Bourdais draws right up in back of Tracy once again on lap 102 64 to go and they're nose to tail Bourdais is having a ball here he really is enjoying the fight here with Tracy but Serbia again hangs on sees Bourdais tried the outside knows that doesn't work Serbia a tiny bit off the pace of the two front runners. More traffic now ahead of Paul Tracy. Top of the screen here. More traffic for Tracy to make his way through. And he has done it a little bit better than Bourdais as he's come across it. Now we should point something out to you. If you're familiar with oval track racing, NASCAR style, for example, drivers occasionally go below the white line and everything's fine. As we watch Jimmy Vassar run along in fourth position, it's been a great night for the veteran who lives here in Las Vegas, has a home here. But Champ Car has told these drivers you can only touch the white line you can't go below it if you're forced below the driver who does the forcing would be given a stop and go or a drive through penalty tonight as we ride and watch the driver in fourth. Now A.J. Allmendinger has been on the charge. He wasn't happy with his race car at all. Qualified only eighth but he's advanced nicely up to fifth in that Intel number 10. Intel back on this car for the second time this season for the Roosport team out of Loveland Colorado. Justin Wilson who won the team's first ever race earlier this season in the CDW 9 machine. Now Wilson slowly making his way up. He's up to 11th now, but the nine car has struggled all weekend long as well. And have a look at there. 40 seconds. That's four big bursts of extra 50 horsepower. What might be even more significant for A.J. Allmendinger is on lap 96. He set the fastest lap of the race. So Allmendinger is coming on pace and coming on strong right at the time on the back half of this race as Tagliani continues to make good use of that tremendous start he got. Not up all the way to fourth on that initial drop of the green. Started very deep in the field. Tagliani 13th back there with Tracy. He followed Tracy up through the field. Tag with not as much speed. He struggled to hang on to the top five. Sits in sixth. And here comes Mario Dominguez about to go by him. So Dominguez in the other index car. This is the seven. He's headed to sixth position. Big Australian contingent here. Craig Gore and John Fish are here. They, of course, back the Aussie Vineyards team. They fly over from Australia to watch their team progress. Chris? Well, Alex Tagliani and his team decided after the warm-up when nothing was working right there, another one that has chased the setup all weekend, let's just throw the dice. Good place to do it, I suppose, in Las Vegas and see what we come up with. Well, they hit on something, and he's been competitive in the race, so that paid off. Also, Dominguez, a little while ago, having radio trouble, missed his pit call and stayed out two laps too long. They finally got him to come in, and they did a, a big adjustment on the front of the car. They put a turn and a half on the front wing. He had a tremendous understeer. Well, apparently, they're closing in on the setup, chasing the racetrack a little bit. Now the two of them, who have taken some chances this evening, are side by side. Pretty exciting. Mario Dominguez on the Cosworth Power to Pass button. You can see the flashing taillight there, trying to use that 50-horsepower burst and get by Tagliani and scoot to sixth, and he does it. And there's what it does right there. Yeah. He spent three laps side by side. He pressures the 50-horsepower. Boom! He draws three car lengths away. And Dominguez has burned up 30 of his Power to Pass 60 seconds. Up front, it's still Tracy. Bourdais in the McDonald's car chasing the index three. We'll be right back in Vegas. Back in the 
City Glitter Gulch, they call it, Las Vegas, Nevada, Las Vegas Motor Speedway, the site of round 11. Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. Paul Tracy leads in the index number three for Jerry Forsyth's team. Second spot belongs to the Newman Haas Bunch. Sebastian Bourdais, the championship leader. A little further back, Rodolfo Levine there in eighth position. He's got uh, with him Timo Glock in the DHL car. As we go back up front now and check in with the leaders, and here's and Serbia chasing down his teammate. And look what happens. High traffic time again, and Bourdais is forced to back off. As soon as he gets a straight fight with him and Tracy, he can go right up behind him. So Bourdais is just not comfortable when there are multiple cars around the racing line. Red light on the left-hand side. That is for Bjorn Verdheim. That denotes, of course, he is a rookie. First time he has ever run a racing car at night and first time ever on a super speedway like this. Wow, he got an eye opener yet in last night's practice Absolutely. session. Absolutely, he did. Verheim qualified very well, ran strong early, started fifth, but he has dropped back to tenth now with still what we have 54 laps to go. Yeah. Top two still nailed together, Derek. And look what happens again. Borde comes right up behind him. I think Borde knows now. He's got to get clean air. He's going to have to try and force his way past Tracy at some stage if he's to get a clear run to try and maybe draw a little gap on Tracy because when he's behind him, he just doesn't like it. Well, remember, it was 10 or 15 laps ago. Bourdais got up on Tracy, worked him inside and out, and got by him briefly, and then backed out of it going down into three and let Tracy go. So he's shown that even though that bodywork is missing up front, he can get there and make a move. Timo Glock perhaps about to go a lap down. He is sitting ninth there, and Glock's on the button. You can see the, the bright red light as he was down. Actually, that's the rookie light, we should say. Timo Glock, one of the first-year drivers. Serbia for second. Through the tri-oval, Oriole Serbia, the Pacific Care 2 car. He's caught his teammate Bourdais now. And we'll see if Serbia can get by. Now, these two cars raced for the win side by side here one year ago. Serbia can't get it done. Oh, I see Serbia move the wheel just to correct the car when he's on that higher line. I don't think these will go really side by side. But again, Tracy gets in multiple cars in traffic. And Bourdais is forced to drop behind. There is no doubt he's a faster car, but he is not comfortable in this dirty air. Yeah? Speaking of dirty air and not being comfortable, that would be Sebastian Bourdais has already called and said the car is getting loose in traffic, which we've seen with a lot of cars here today. At his next pit stop, he wants to take out more front wing. Watching Ryan Hunter Ray in the 31 car. That's the yellow machine, the red paw. They call it a backup box is the backer of that team. That car now for the Rocket Sports Bunch. Hunter Ray right there running in 13th. He's given up a couple of positions. Timo Glock in the hunt as well as we watch battles all over the racetrack. That's Rodolfo Levine being tracked hard. Levine in eighth position now. He's got Mario Dominguez right with him there. Winners on ovals in the Champ Car World Series. Ryan Hunter Ray had that dominant run one season ago at the Milwaukee Mile, led every lap as that one career win, one of his two career victories, one of them coming on an oval. Cristiano Damata's won on an oval, but tonight Damata has really, really struggled. It really is a bit of a shame for Levin in yeah. that Corona car because oh. after he destroyed the primary car in that in that accident, Glock's right behind him, so Glock and Levin are in a, in, in a fight. Um, Levin had to go with his backup car as we as we oh 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 who's that on the way highlight? Highlight. That's that day. Yeah. Yes, it trying is trying to follow Tracy around through the traffic. He's got Serbia with him there. Bourdais struggling a little bit. No wonder he's beginning to call in on the radio saying this thing is loose. That's on loose. the butt. That's as loose as you can get here. But Levin, just to finish that story, Levin got one lap in, in the very first practice session, had gearbox troubles, so he was a bit behind the, the uh, eight ball right off the bat and did a great job in qualifying and, and started off extremely Back to fast trade, here, but he's still well in the one top shot of push the path. Top 10. Telling Serbia to use the button. Serbia has yet to use Cosworth power to pass. He's still got his full 60 seconds in the bank. And when Bourdais went around on the high side and threaded the needle through the lap traffic, getting by Glock there, Bourdais was on the button for the first time tonight. So Bourdais used his oh. first 10 second burst. I think I just saw Serbia get a bit sideways too. Watch Bourdais here. Look at him on the high side. Look, oh, in the dirt. Dust and dirt kicked up. Now watch. That's all the marbles on the outside. Look at the light. There it goes. Oh, he sticks it on to, to maintain the position. He knew by him. 
So he uses some of that 50 extra Cosworth horsepower that's available to everybody. But the more you use early in the race, this is only lap 120, the less you're going to have to use to challenge a Paul Tracy or whoever might be leading towards the end. Now, lap traffic may well be a factor as the laps wind down. 45 laps remaining here tonight at Las Vegas Motor Speedway and the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400. We've been all green so far. It's been Tracy since he got around Bourdais in the first handful of laps. Tracy has led other than on pit stops. He's gone right back oh, to the top oh, of the charts. Oh, oh. Way yes. loose. Yes. One of the Rocket Sports cars. Is that Glock who had to back out of it? Oh, man. That was a heart attack right there about to happen. That's Ryan Hunter Ray. And who, he's had a huge number of incidents this season. Oh. Hunter Ray with that huge wreck at Milwaukee on the Oval earlier this year. Very nearly tagged the wall here at Las Vegas. Yikes. That was even worse than Bourdais. Gets it out of, out of line. Gets up in the dirt. Of course, once you get it out of line, then you go into the dirt. Now you have less grip than ever before and Ryan Hunter Ray rode the cushion all the way around <laughs> the top. This is not El Dorado. Okay, let's go back down. Pit three. Pit three. There's a good name on this race, a hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this, 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 this is some stuff here. Well, Hunter Ray certainly needed saving, and he saved the car himself. Oh, oh the car! One of the index cars in Tracy, the wall. Tracy, Paul Tracy into the wall hard. The race leader. He's lost the rear wing. The right side of the car heavily damaged. Caution for the first time tonight. A huge impact for the. You okay, there, buddy? Oh. Yeah. Paul Tracy indicating he's injured. Well, are you hurt? He's moving. He's taking the steering wheel off. He's peeling off his gloves. No, I don't think so. ah. That was a huge okay. wallop. It's obviously. What happened? Did he just lose it or what? No. The bastard hit me. Tracy saying he was hit by Bourdais. Litter all over the racetrack. Caution for the first time tonight with 42 laps to go. You heard Neil Micklewright talking to Paul Tracy and he said, I'm hurt. Then he said on the second call, no, I'm not. He said, he said more than that. He yes, says, he, did. he says, Sebastian hit me. Oh, there he it did. Is. Oh, man. He gave him the chrome horn going down into turn three. Bourdais with a huge lump. Now, what's the impact here? Just, like, this is 200 miles an hour. What's this? Boom! Turns the car almost up on its side. And as Tracy correctly said, that I, won't hurt. I won't say it like him, yeah. That hurt. Sebastian Bourdais, our championship leader, just wallops into the back of our leader, Paul Tracy. Bourdais wow. with damage. You can see it there on the front of the one car. There it is. The that nose is Tracy's cone. tire right there. The nose cone scuffed hard. Wow. And it didn't look, Derek, as though Tracy had backed off or anything like that. Let's have a look. We've got an onboard view from Oriol Serbia, who was running third at the time. So Serbia's watched this show pretty much all evening. This is going down now to turn three. Long, straight, back straight. It all happens in front. There's crash on the right side. You couldn't really see it very well. Um, It'd be a little too far back in the shot there to give us a good look. But uh, obviously from our high look down into turn three, you could see that Bourdais got up under the back wing and probably tagged Tracy in the gearbox. And there it just is. Look at that. Him. There's the telltale sign. You can't get away with this. And he's got. Oh, look at that. He's okay. got dive look planes here. knocked I'm gonna, off. I'm going to slow this down for you. Bourdais is on the high side. Tracy moved up to block him. Nah, nah, no, no. Bourdais now. This is, remember, this is 200 miles an hour here. Now they're going down the back side. This is into turn three. Tracy's going to back off slightly. I'm going to slow it down for you. I'm going to stop the video right at the point of impact. Slow it down. We're going to slow it down. Bourdais now, this, the, the front wing is like a scoop. A little bit there, a little bit further into turn three. This is above 200. Oh, yeah. he, he goes to the outside. He got the gearbox. Bourdais goes to the outside. There's the point of impact. And he actually hits Tracy's right rear wheel, scoops him up, and then sends him into a spin. I think Bourdais simply misjudged his movement to the outside line. 
We're being told that Paul Tracy look was planning a pit look, stop. Look, 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 look at that impact. Car oh. gets up on two wheels. That is a huge, huge destruction shunt. And it's a great thing that the safer barriers are in place here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway because Tracy side slapped that wall a ton. Chris McClure. Paul Tracy was on his way to the pits. His crew was over the wall. The man, Steve Moore, on the right front had already started waving his arms so that he would be ready when Paul came around the curve, which he never did. Let's go to Jan. And now we have a chance to look at the nose cone. And it does not appear as though that is going to be something that will be replaced. And Sebastian Bourdais has already said on the radio, how would I know if Paul Tracy was going to pit? There was no signal whatsoever. 11.8 second pit stop. So now that is confirmation that we heard from the index team. Paul Tracy was coming into the pits, checked up. Sebastian Bourdais was drafting and punted him. And you know what, Jan? I'm on Bourdais' side on this one. I, I think he's absolutely right. Bourdais was moving to the high side, did not realize Tracy was going to get out of the speed that abruptly. But an interesting look at the pit stop there. If you look at the side of Bourdais' car, we're going to show it to you here. Just look at all the oil that is scattered all over Bourdais' nose cone here. That is why he took off the tear off so early on. That oil is coming out of Paul Tracy's car. Well, we remain under full course caution as they remove the index three car from the turn three area and clean up the debris. I'm not sure. I think Bourdais may have some damage on that right front wing. It looked like one of the side flaps off the end plate was dinged as well. well Looks that, like A.J. Allmendinger may have a problem. They've got to put the diaper. The Champ Car Safety Team, excellent team, of course. Allmendinger, who was running fifth, he has stopped and throws the wheel. We're told he's run out of fuel. Now, why would he throw the wheel? Why would they not get him, bring him around, fuel him up? Uh, that might be uh, an unfortunate piece of driver emotion, if that's what it is. Hard to imagine a strange turn of events here. Allmendinger was fifth at the moment that happened. All right, we'll sort it all out and come right back in Las Vegas. Sunday. Welcome back to Las Vegas Motor Speedway, the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400 tonight, the 11th race of 2005. I'm Rick Benjamin with Derek Daly on Bicus, Chris McClure on Pit Road. Busy series of events here. Paul Tracy slammed into the outside wall after contact with Sebastian Bourdais. They were running 1 2, and A.J. Allmendinger has run his car, the Intel number 10, out of fuel as Tracy's car continues to be removed up in turn three. Now, Derek, we see it all the time in closed car racing, sports cars, stock cars. When you're heading to pit road, the driver normally puts up a hand to indicate to the drivers behind, I'm slowing down, I'm headed that way. They don't do it in this kind of race. Can't do it at 200 miles an hour. Just cannot raise your hand at those type of speeds. Stick, stick your hand out of your car doing 70 miles an hour and just feel the force. At 200, you, you could even lose control, but that is a very, very hurt racing car. This is an emergency tow in here. This is just uh, I think he he's put the steering far. wheel back on so they may be able to get him around and we will try to find out a little more about Almendinger's situation. All right, let's get an update from the Newman Haas pit area Jan, because what are they saying about what happened out there? Craig Hampson is speaking with him on the radio right now. Craig, you've had a chance to talk to Sebastian about that incident. What happened? Well, Obviously, Paul was coming into the pits, but Sebastian doesn't know that. And uh, when Paul backed off to come into the pits, I mean, you're going 200, 201 miles an hour, and, you know, we hit him in the back. And I feel badly about that, but in the driver's meeting, they were very explicit how the, a driver had to indicate that his, his intention to pit. He has to get to the inside and start slowing down. And I think Tracy was planning to get into the pits as fast as he could, and uh, we didn't know it was happening. So, uh, again, I'm really sorry about it. Definitely, I wanted to race him at the end. I really would have preferred that. Um, and I think we're pretty lucky that it looks like our car isn't more badly damaged. I will have to say, though, I've seen Paul Tracy with a big black mark on the nose of his car plenty of times. Thank you, Craig. Let's get to Chris McClure. Neil Mickelwright didn't hear any of that, but they say down there, Paul checked up. He was coming into the pits. We do know that. And uh, Sebastian whacked him from the back, and he just didn't know he was going to uh, lift. Are you buying that? No, I'm not buying it. I mean, you know, it's up to the guy behind to, you know, to do the passing. I mean, 
if you if you can't come into the pit lane without being hit by the guy behind you well then obviously there's a problem he's too close or whatever I mean clearly any time that we have a problem with Bourdais I mean it's always our fault I mean God bless him he can't you know he's perfect he can't do anything wrong but you know we led all night he went by us a couple of times we went by him um, you know we had a car that was just as quick as his and he ran into the back of us I mean you you can paint it any which way you like but he ran into the back of us thank you thanks let's go upstairs all right they remove the three car and the cleanup continues up in turn three Derek how did you see it Neil Mickelwright is correct Bourdais did run into the back of him however I still side with Craig Hampson you're absolutely right it, it was not intentional. He was very close. It is 200 miles an hour. Bourdais tried to get off to the right side. There was nothing malicious. It was an unfortunate racing accident. I hate to see the leader, however, go off looking like something that's going to go straight to the skip. That, that'll go to the crusher, no question about it, as the index team gathers up. Now, we've documented for you all season long the rivalry between Sebastian Bourdais and Paul Tracy. Let's take a look back at some of the things that have happened this year. This was Monterey, Mexico. And, and Bourdais blamed Tracy. I, bl I blame Bourdais. That was Bourdais' fault. Right there, look, he's on the left side. Boom, he hits him right there. That was Bourdais' fault. He blamed Tracy. Like Tracy. Good care as few there. Toronto, this was really one of the wildest moments of the season. Off pit road. And Bourdais crosses over the line right that. He was forced to do that because he couldn't go four wheels above that yellow line. I don't blame Tracy there, but Tracy didn't back off. Maybe he should have. Remember that Tracy led the race with one of his front wings missing for a long time, then ran the car out of fuel. That's what cost him the night or the day there in Toronto back in July. Sebastian Bourdais will be the restart leader, it appears, minus that cowl piece, that shot cover. And Derek, we didn't get a very good look at it, but when Bourdais was on pit road, I took a look at the right front corner of his race car. I think he's got a little wing damage on the end plate there. Yeah, he might have, but there's a huge cleanup going on over between turns three and four right side that's why they're still running down the pit lane to give the champ car safety crew time to get that cleaned up meanwhile glad to see Almendinger lost a huge amount of time now he's down in 15th place we presume running that thing out of fuel but Bourdais now is in the catbird seat because he is in nice clean air ahead of everybody else but Serbia can Serbia now potentially make a challenge I think he might be able to. He could well do that. If you look at the Cosworth power to pass time that's remaining, Bourdais used a 10 second burst. Serbia hasn't used it at all. Neither has Jimmy Vassar. Now we heard from Pit Road earlier. Vassar likes his race car. This will bunch everybody up for the restart. Vassar may have something for these guys before all said and done. Jimmy will restart third. Almendinger will restart in 14th. We were riding with him a moment ago. They did tow the car around. The Roosport team refueled the Intel number 10. And Almendinger's back, but he is three laps down out of contention after falling from fifth position. 32 laps to go. The cleanup continues up in turn three as we ride here with Almendinger. Now, let's show you what happened as Almendinger ran the car out of fuel just as the caution was happening here with the incident up in three involving Tracy and Bourdais. Let's listen in as we take you back a few minutes. Ah. Stay out. He had to go back on the race trip. They told him to stay out anyway. Yeah. Pits were closed. Let's listen. Out of fuel. Nice job. They cut it too close. He came to pit road. Pits were closed. They sent him back out. And he ran the car out of fuel. Now they did give him the tow and bring him around. We're being told the pits may have been open actually at that point, but the team told him to go back wow. out during the caution period. That was a miscalculation by the team. That's a no-no. Sorry, boys. You can't do stuff like that. Running in the top five at the time. Wow. Car owners not happy with the incident either. Jerry Forsyth, the team owner for Paul Tracy, talking to Carl Haas. I don't condone it. I know you don't, I don't condone it, but that's the second goddamn time. Jerry Forsyth, right side, Paul Tracy's owner. Please believe me. Please. Please believe me. You can't control your driver? Well, I'm filing a complaint on this one. You didn't see the one in Monterey either. That's what
much at all. Well, he's going to get sanctioned. I guarantee you that. Highly emotionally charged situation. All right, Paul Tracy is back on pit road. He's with Chris. He was just heading back into the pits from the infield hospital. We heard you say on the radio you thought you were all right. Apparently that's the case. Yeah, I mean, I was a bit dazed there. I mean, obviously I hit the wall, you know, about 190 miles an hour. So, you know, frustrating, you know. I don't know what Bordes was thinking. I was coming in the pits, and they listen to our radio conversations. They know I'm coming in the pits. And uh, they say they didn't. Wow. Well, you know, they listen to our radio, so they can say say all they want, but, you know, they constantly monitor what we're saying on the radio, as we do to them. So they knew I was coming in and what Bordes was doing under the white line. I don't know. So, you know, it's a hard hit, and, you know, we come out on the short end of the stick again, thanks to Sebastian. Are you struggling to control your anger right now? Because I'll tell you what, Neil Mickelwright and Sherry Forsyth have been pretty angry out here. Yeah, I mean, what am I supposed to say? I mean... You know, just keeps he keeps doing the same thing all the time, but he, he seems to get away with it. So I guess it's uh, you know good for him and, and bad for me. So it's just disappointing. I'm just I'm just frustrated. So you know he didn't have the car to beat us tonight. I came from the back to the front in five laps, and he didn't have anything for us. So, so that was the way he had to beat us. We're gratified you're all right. Thank, Thank you. you. Strong words from Paul Tracy. Now was Bourdais below the white line? That'd be a penalty. Here's another look, Derek. Okay, down the back straight. The, the white line they're talking about is down along here. Bourdais has a look down the inside, realizes Tracy is going to move down. He's going to move down because he's going into the pits. Bourdais is not below the white line that I can see there. He maybe looks like such. he's on the line, maybe. Yeah, maybe a little bit, maybe a couple of inches. There's the contact. Turns Tracy right up the race. You know what? Side slaps. I, I understand. Why Jerry Forsyth, Tracy's team owner, as you watch the whack here, I understand why he's so upset. That was not a malicious move by Bourdais. Might have been a dumb thing to do, it was not malicious. We'll be back. Welcome back to Las Vegas Motor Speedway. I'm Rick Benjamin. Derek Daly alongside Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. Tonight, the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400. Sebastian Bourdais will be the restart leader, Derek. Now, Tony Cotman always watches these things very carefully. He's going to let Bourdais take the green at the head of the field, so he must feel that was okay. If that was malicious, I'd fire him. I'd kick him out of the championship right now. That's why I don't believe that was malicious. Might have been dumb, but was not malicious. No restart this time by J.D. Wilbur flowing, fl <laughs> throwing the yellow flag at the field. They were told they'd go green this time by the yellow flowing because he threw it. As we watch Bourdais take him down into one slowly. The lights were out on the safety car. But the code is between three and four, not on the back straight. That was Kenny Seawick telling his... exactly why we're stopping that telling Bourdais where the, re right. we don't need anything else from them. where the restart cone no, is. The reason it didn't go yellow is Bourdais took the jump, went too fast. But Dominguez, to Paul Tracy's teammate, is now right behind Servia. He's third on the restart. Ooh. Getting around Vassar. Coming to the green. This could be good here. Green, green, green. 27 to go. Oh, Servia. Vassar. Three Outside. wide. Outside. Serbia's on the push to pass. Outside. He's so on the Vassar. push to pass. So is Verheim. So is Wilson. Outside. For the lead. Oh! Contact. Man! Outside. Hang on to your Hollyhocks. He still didn't make the pass. Bourdais right, right back outside. at him. This is just like a year ago Outside. when Junkero was driving the two car. Yikes! They battled for the win Outside. side by side over the last 25 laps. Vassar has gotten back to third in front of Mario Dominguez. Vassar trying to hang with the leaders here. 25 to go, a Saturday night shootout at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We're glad you're with us with the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400. Here's the Gulfstream 12 car, Vassar. His last win came on an oval 
Alec Fontana in California at the end of the 2002 champ car season. One more look at what happens. Serbia trying to get around Bourdais. He's on the pole. Pong the push to pass him. Bourdais moves up. Serbia didn't realize he was going to make that move. I'm starting to wonder what? here, Derek. I'm starting to wonder about Sebastian Bourdais. Didn't he know he was there? We could hear the spotter. Watch this. Serb oh, look at this. Bourdais moves right up. He moved to the right side. Wow. Serbia held his line. He didn't move the steering wheel. That, it, it, that was a surprise. So Bourdais refusing to be denied here. Here comes Alex Tagliani. You got to look at the Aussie Vineyards green and yellow machine, the 15 car. He's right up behind Dominguez as the laps wind down. Verheim lays down the fastest lap of the night in the Liquamali 4. Verheim's up in sixth position now. He's got Timo Glock and Rodolfo Levine back there with him. Levine, that, the last car on the lead lap in seventh. That HVM Liqui Moly car, that is one of the best cars on the racetrack here. But remember, it's a rookie driving it. You give him a couple of races on these super speedways with the car set up that well, and he will definitely attempt to move his way onto the podium. Has never been there yet. When you see the flashing light, we said it earlier on, that is when they are on the Cosworth power to pass. 50 extra horsepower to try and blow by somebody. Bourdais, Serbia, Vassar, Dominguez, Tagliani, Verheim, your top six. Wow. Verheim has run a 26.57 as we ride here with Serbia, the Pacific Air 2, down the back straightaway, the Nellis straightaway. Of course, we're in the shadows of the Nellis Air Force Base here in Las Vegas. What must Serbia be thinking? Wow, the championship leader to make a couple of moves like that. Serbia second in the points chase now. He took this car over for the third race of the season after regular driver Bruno Jantier was injured in Indy. Ah. I can tell you what Oriol Serbia is thinking, and that is, wow, my teammates not following the orders that we were told. <laughs> they were told before the restart, we want you guys to run single file and try and drop Jimmy Vassar. Make sure you run together and tow each other. Did not expect to see that Cosworth power to pass. Now Sebastian Bourdais has called on the radio and said, guys, tell me the moment that Oriol Serbia presses that button, I want to know that he's on it. Let's get to Chris McClure. Well, the steam is still rising from the Forsyth pit, as you can well imagine. Neil Mickle right you're taking or requesting official action tell us what you want um, basically we're going to lodge a protest um, against Bourdais for everything that's allowed within the rule book um, you know danger reckless driving um, unsportsmanlike conduct uh, the whole thing I mean all year long we've been having problems with him he always blames us obviously we got hit from behind and um, I've already informed Champ Car that we're going to be lodging a protest and we'll take it as far as we can. Everything that's available to us in the rule book, we're going to follow through on. Thank you. Thank you. And there is so much at stake in these races. That, that, that is why a Neil Mickelwright and a Jerry Forsythe take, their, take this uh, very seriously. So um, they, they, they choose to go to the rule book that will put Tony Cotman on the hot seat as to what decision he may or may not make. Now, something as potentially uh, all-encompassing as what we see here, I doubt Tony, Tony Cotman, is gonna, who's very good at making instantaneous decisions, I doubt he's going to make a decision on this on the fly. This oh, may go yeah. for days afterwards. You'll review this, or they will review this for quite some time. Boudet continues as the leader. Great action behind him. This is a little further back. This is Dominguez, Tagliani, and now he's got uh, back there the Justin Wilson car, the CDW machine. Now, Wilson was eighth. He's on the move late in the going here. Wilson laying into the Cosworth power to pass. He's got a free wide battle with Verheim going there. Verheim is sixth. Levine up in the mix in seventh spot. Wilson's shown a lap down in eighth, trying to get himself up into contention. Here's Tagliani now with Verheim. Look at this battle. Verheim still has the fastest lap of the race here. He has been told that that inside tighter line is potentially faster or makes it more difficult for anybody to try and make the move. So he's a quick study here. Tag again to the outside. But Verheim makes the pass and he moves into fifth position. Now if you're looking at the tails away shot, the yellow, the red light on Verheim's car indicates he's a rookie here at Vegas. The, the solid red is the rookie light, the rain light. When it flashes red, they're on the Cosworth power to pass button. They are right behind Dominguez, who runs fourth in the remaining Forsyth Index car. That's the seven. Fanning out single file down the back straightaway. 15 laps to go tonight. 15 to go at Las Vegas. There is a discussion going on right now between Tony Cotman 
Champ Cars, Director of Racing and Jerry Forsythe. They are in deep conversation as we speak. Want to remind you one more time here tonight why we are here for the Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400. Champ Car World Series. Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. It helps survivors in the wake of the two hurricanes, Rita and Katrina. The Red Cross estimates billions in donations will be needed. You can help. Call 1-800-HELP-NOW or go to redcross.org. We'll be right back in Las Vegas. 80,000 to watch the NASCAR Craftsman trucks in the nightcap of the doubleheader. The Champ Car World Series, second trip here to Las Vegas Motor Speedway, one of the favorite venues for all these teams. Three different drivers, Paul Tracy, Jimmy Vassar, Alex Tagliani, call Las Vegas at least part of their home. It's their home city for part of the year at least. And all of them wanting to perform well. Rodolfo Levine, Jorn Vernheim for sixth position. Levine in that backup car, Derek, continues to impress tonight. Great tussle here. These are two teammates, remember. Vuretheim, they're both in the HVM car. Vuretheim's back by Eurosport. Champ car races are shown on Eurosport throughout uh, the European countries. But Levine, with the Mexican backing, teammates right in the middle of a great fight, sixth and seventh. Down through the trial, we're heading to turn number one. Nine laps to go next time by. There's 10 to go for the leader, Bourdais. They'll see nine to go next time around. It's been a very rapid run here at Las Vegas. Only yellow of the night, the huge hit that race leader Paul Tracy had up on the turn three wall just a short time ago. In fact, we just got a note passed to us here talking about the discussion between Jerry Forsythe and Champ Car's VP of Operations, Tony Cotman. That discussion's taking place topside here, right behind our broadcast booth. Oh, 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 look at these boys. Four Almost positions. Alex Tagliani, he is in fifth. He's got Bjorn Vernheim. They're battling Dominguez up ahead. Levine right behind. Remember, Derek, Levine in that HVM 55, the Corona car, now painted in blue and yellow. He was very fast Friday. He was running laps at 202 miles an hour in his primary car. They've got that car tuned well. Okay. Meets that Glock. Glock just pushed the extra 50 horsepower. You saw the flat, the, the light begin to flash on the backside. 155 laps gone. If you have some left, you want to make some passes, you're not going to have much time to use it after the next 10 laps, so let's lay on the button. Eight laps to go for the leader. It continues to be shown as Sebastian Bourdais. He got into the back end of Tracy, turned the three car. Tracy side slapped the wall a ton up in three. The discussion is going on. Will there be a penalty levied against Sebastian Bourdais? Those two drivers have had now three huge incidents this season. Monterey, Toronto, and now here at Las Vegas. Tracy's okay, but his bid for victory by the boards after the contact. Down into the corner, here's Bourdais. He lost that shock cover earlier. He has soldiered on. He raced right behind Tracy for dozens and dozens of laps tonight. He's been able to hang onto the lead, even though his aerodynamics have got to be totally a miss with the shock cover gone. Serbia, his teammate, second. Serbia the winner at Montreal a couple of weeks ago. First career victory in Champ Car. Serbia second in the Pacific Care number two. He is four tenths of a second behind Bourdais. Six laps to go. Bourdais trying to win again here tonight. Tonight, trying to win his second straight at Las Vegas. Bourdais this season, this is the 11th race of the season. Bourdais with four wins already. Serbia has got 50 seconds left, as does Bourdais. Of Cosworth power to pass. Jimmy Vassar with 33 seconds left in the bank. We thought Vassar might have something for the leaders, Derek. He's 2.2 seconds back. The restart, he was packed right up with the top two cars. He hasn't been able to stay with the two Newman Haas machines. No, and we saw these two boys. We saw Bourdais use the power to pass to stop Serbia trying to get by him. We saw Serbia use it to try and pass Bourdais in a completely separate incident. They both have just the same amount left. Maybe this will be a sprint. But you know what? No shot covers the hot ticket here. Seems to be working for him. Vassar's using the power to pass. But what about Sebastian Bourdais, Jan? Well, you talk about the hot ticket being no shot cover. The team thinks the hot ticket is to run low. They remind Sebastian Bourdais, run low just like last year. That was the ticket. He had the lead. Of course, there was no Cosworth power to pass last year, but he ran low, and his teammate could not get enough juice to get him on the high side. So look for him to stay low, and he wants his spotter to tell him the moment 
moment that Servia presses his button because obviously their teammates still have that info. Well, Jimmy Vassar's been mashing the button. He's got five seconds left now, three seconds of power to pass time. Vassar's using everything he's got to try to get up in touch with the leaders with two laps to go, two to go. Oh, they're both on it. They're both on it. Flashing lights. So Bourdais was probably told, there he is, was probably told that Servia is on the button here, on the juice. Back Give me the power. It. Yeah, lay out of it for a couple of seconds. You can get right back on it. They'll see the white flag this time by. <laughs> One to go at Las Vegas. So this obviously is not team orders. I don't know with a Servia who is closing up now. Both of them on the button. Servia trying to high side Bourdais. Can he get under him? Can he cross underneath him? Down the back straightaway. Final time tonight at Las Vegas. The Nella straightaway into three. Bourdais too high and too far behind. He's got the fastest lap in the race. It won't be enough. Bourdais off of turn four. Heading to the checkered flag for the fifth time in 2005. Sebastian Three Bourdais. Way to stick with that car. For position, Levine and Great Bernheim. And Levine by a foot gets fifth. A top five for Rodolfo Levine after wrecking his primary car yesterday. Brings the backup car home in fifth, getting by his teammate. Bourdais' fifth victory of the season. This one, though, will be under protest from team owner Jerry Forsyth. Oh, will it ever. We were hoping to get Champ Car's race director and VP of Operations Tony Cotman on the horn with us. We've had that opportunity several times this year to discuss rules and officiating, but he was being talked to by Jerry Forsyth, so we were unable to hear from Tony Cotman during the race itself. We'll try to talk to him, though, in a couple of moments. We're told that we'll be able to get a word with him here momentarily. Bourdais is going to lay some donuts down tonight in celebration here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Well, Fifth win of the season for Bourdais, sixth for the team in 11 races in 2005. Those donuts are as ugly as that move he made earlier on on Paul Tracy. He's in the grass trying to do some donuts. He's still in the grass trying to do donuts as we watch the fireworks display go off to entertain. A lot of kids here uh, this evening. So the fireworks are particularly for the kiddies. Fireworks display continues. Bourdais will head to victory lane in McDonald's number one. He will lengthen his point lead, but will call it unofficial. If this was a horse race, they'd have provisional up on the tote board right now because Jerry Forsyth, we saw him and heard him tell Bourdais team owner Carl Haas, I'm protesting this one. After the contact, Bourdais got into the back end of Tracy with about 40, uh, about 50 laps to go tonight. Only caution of the night, turned the three car, sent Tracy hard into the outside wall. And Tracy's okay, but he lost a chance at victory tonight here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Four days in victory lane. We will talk to him coming up at Vegas. Back at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, Sebastian Bourdais taking off the helmet. He is the winner, at least at this point, the Champ Car World Series event here at Las Vegas. The Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400 to Sebastian Bourdais for the second consecutive season. This will be an interesting little I think discussion. So. I with think so. Bourdais. I know we're only going to get his side. Well, Jan Bikas, it's all yours. And Sebastian Bourdais, two years in a row. But I can already tell by his expression, there's more in his mind than just victory today after that contact with Paul Tracy. A fantastic victory, but I know that we have to ask you first about the contact with Paul Tracy. Well, he was blocking, and how can I know that he's going to back off and go in the pits if he doesn't commit like he's supposed to? In the briefing, we, we were clear about that. We had to commit, put two wheels underneath the white line to signify to the driver behind us that we are going to pit. He never did that. So I was right behind him, and when he braked, I had no idea he was going to pit on this lap. And, you know, I'm just glad he's all right, but I don't even know how he can be complaining about this one. It's just... I mean, how can I just purposely want to run into this guy at 200 miles an hour? It's just foolish. So uh, it's, you know, I'm just glad this McDonald's car made it through. It was a, a big mystery to me that we survived that incident. But you know what? Sometimes you need a bit of luck. Now tell me about that luck, because early on during your first pit stop, you were pounding the steering wheel because you lost a shock cover up here. How did that affect the car? Well, we lost quite a bit of downforce and behind PT after that I was using the tires quite bad. Then I, every time he was trying to save fuel after the, he saw that we were going one lap later than he was every time. And, uh, you know, I, I was right behind him every time I was trying to make a move. 
inside outside he wasn't letting me by so it was uh, quite rough and um, I'm just you know glad we made it through I didn't I didn't think we were gonna hold off uh, oil because really at the end we the car was probably significantly slower than oil but uh, the bottom line works here in Vegas it was fantastic for you. Great fortune that that lucky horseshoe continues. Tell us also. Well, somebody lost. Somebody stole it. So if anybody knows about it, it would be good to pick, get it back. Well, whoever stole it, I think is having bad luck, unfortunately. But for you, Sebastian, early in the race, three wide, there was contact between Paul Tracy and Jimmy Vassar. I think you were in, it was Oriole, I believe, in the bottom of that sandwich. Did you see that? No, I had no idea what happened behind. I just focused and tried to keep it low and. I was really, really real weird about this race, and I'm just very, very glad we made it through and uh, getting out of it with even a bigger lead in the championship. And we are joined by Carl Haas. Carl, can I ask you a quick question? Because I know you had some, some words with Jerry Forsyth, and I know he's thinking about lodging a protest. Your thoughts on, on what happened out on the racetrack? Well, I, I think Jerry, Jerry was very upset, and which I can understand. Uh, I, I did not see it. They didn't play it on the TV, so <laughs> I don't think either did I. Either did uh, Jerry see it because you, they didn't have it on the TV, so I don't know. All right, well, thank you, Carl, and congratulations. Another victory here in Vegas. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get to Chris McClure. Well, second and third place here. They're just amiably discussing the various facets of the race. Let's go to second place first, Oriel Servia. You were talking about push to pass at the end and the fact that you, you gave it everything you had, but with the high line, you don't have much chance even with that. No, it was, was really tough. I mean, just before the last restart, I had one more shot than, than him to push to pass. But then I saw Jimmy on the outside, so I had to use my shot to push to pass just to protect from Jimmy. Then we were even with Sebastian. I knew it was going to be really tough. Unless we find traffic, uh, I, there was no chance because there was a couple of times I pulled beside, but the guy who was in the inside running the shorter line ends up being first. So, I mean, I tried. It was, was very good for Newman Haas, one and two. Pacific Air Car deserved to be at the top, but uh, second, we will take it. Uh, it's very good operation for the championship, actually. You know, that's fierce out there, and the pace was blistering, and it was green almost all the way, save the one incident. I know. I mean, is that is that just the joy of the whole thing for well, you? I, I have to say, you know, very good drivers out there, not to create yellows, but at the beginning of the race, I think it was lap two, I touched wheels with uh, Jimmy in turn four, so I thought this is going to be a tough race. If the second lap, we're already bouncing wheels at 200 miles an hour, you know. But uh, after that, it was a pretty clean race. Um, I had a lot of fun. Have you grown to like this kind of oval, a mile and a half, the long ones? I love ovals. I love super speedways, short ovals. Uh, I think if we come back, when we come back here, we should come back with a different uh, wing package just to make it a little more challenging and a little more overtaking. But uh, but I love the place. I love the racetrack. I love Vegas. So for sure, when I come back. I don't know. It looks pretty challenging as it is right now. It is it is challenging. But when you get into a situation like, like that at the end, where you know, one car in front, the other one behind, and you're flat all around, there's not much apart from thinking, I want to win, I want to win. There's not much else you can do, you know, because <laughs> you're already full throttle. So we need to change that a little bit, I think. Well, congratulations. Another nice chapter in a great year. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Second place, Ariel Silvia. Now Jimmy Vassar over here. Now, Jimmy, we just heard him say you, you touched wheels with him. I think you also touched during the uh, early part of it with Paul over well, there. It was the same time. It was the same instance. Uh, you know, Paul was coming hard. I saw him coming, and I had a run on Oriel. I was trying on the outside a few, a few times early on, and it was I got alongside of him, and uh, Paul was alongside of me because we were three wide, and uh, you know, it's just one of those unfortunate situations for me where you're in the middle and uh, it's not where you want to be, but uh, so I got touched on both sides and had to lift and subsequently lost, uh, I think the Goldstream's car lost three or four spots. And so we settled in and had a good stop and, um, you know, the car was real good, just not as good as the, as the, the Newman Haas and Paul's car, but uh, all credit to my guys at PKV. Um, you know, they did a heck of a job all weekend. We had both cars, uh, mine and Demonis, on the second row. and. Uh, you know, it's a good showing for Gulfstream and Bell Micro and KPLJ, all of our sponsors. Uh, you know, all credit also to the, the, the Bridgestone guys. The tires lasted the whole stint, very consistent. And, uh, you know, it was just it was a pretty good day for us all along. Is it fun out there? I mean, you, you've won at a very high rate of speed with a lot of green at 500 miles just down the road here. And you've got a lot of oval experience. This was frantic, intense, everything. Is that something that's really fun to you? Well, you know, it's always fun to drive the Champ Car. Champ Car, to me, is one of the coolest machines on the planet. And uh, but I but I would agree with uh, with Oriole in that 
you know, perhaps it's a little bit too much downforce for us on a track like this. We're averaging 202s or 201s. I think 215s to 220 is probably the right pace for, for a champ car around here. These are road course wings, and, and I think when Oriole says, that, you know, it's not as challenging uh, as perhaps it could be, you know, he's talking about the downforce. You're just putting your foot down. At one, at one point in the race, my foot kind of fell asleep on the accelerator. I had to keep moving it around, but... Uh, um, you know, it was a great, it's a great race. It's good for the fans, and it's good to see a lot of the fans stayed at such a late hour here in Las Vegas. But uh, uh, you know, I think if we come back here to this track, we could uh, we could utilize maybe a little this different uh, aero package, or perhaps the champ cars are more well suited uh, downtown on the streets of Las Vegas. You said when we come back, I don't want to nudge you, I don't want to guide you in any direction. But was this your last oval, maybe? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but if a champ car comes back, I'm coming back too, whether I got a helmet on or a, or a set of headphones. How about the push to pass, an assessment of that on this kind of a circuit that's first go with it? Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. You know, it was definitely useful, but the amount that, that, that it was there, you know, it made its, its, uh, its use pretty, uh, pretty sparingly. I saw Tracy used it to get to the front early on. But he was going to be a sitting duck at the end anyway. If that, you know, I was unfortunate what happened to him. But uh, you know, the, the strategy was that you needed to save, you know, the lion's share if you pushed the pass for the last couple laps, so you couldn't get overtaken. But uh, you know, it's just it makes it more like a video game in the, in the car. You know, we're, okay, we got this, but this guy's got that, and so it's a little bit more interesting. Congratulations on another podium. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great run for Jimmy Vassar, who's talking that this may be his final year behind the wheel. I sure hope not. Look at this. This is a real scary moment. What's Servia down here? Doesn't see Jimmy, goes up, smacks him. He goes into Paul Tracy. How? That was not a three-way major crash. I don't know. That was a lucky one to dodge that bullet. And there you see Tracy on the power to pass at that point. That's what vaulted him to the lead, and he had it for a long time. Oriole Servia has had a terrific year. Back to Milwaukee when he finished third, his first drive for Newman Haas in the Pacific Air car. And we take you to Cleveland. He was third again there at Toronto, the runner up. He had an opportunity to win. Justin Wilson just got by him late in the going. At Edmonton, another runner up spot in the Pacific Air 2 car for Serbia. San Jose, he ran third of the Taylor Woodrow Grand for the inaugural run there and that his first career win coming at the end of August just a couple of weeks ago in the Molson Indy at Montreal fourth place tonight to another driver we know very well Mario Dominguez is with Jan yes and he said it was a very tough day at the office there's fireworks above us right now but you said the fireworks was really on the racetrack a tough day he was really tough the car was uh, the first two stints was just really really bad I had a lot of understeering and a lot of oversteer just like sideways through the corner every time and it was um, it, it was just not a, not fun it was not fun at all we came in we did a couple adjustments we gave a lot more front wing and things like that and at the end I managed to to, to be in fourth place but I just didn't have enough speed to to catch uh, the three guys in front of me they were just too fast I was flat out when you add the downforce to the front you don't really have something to do to the rear. What do they do if you said it was pushing and it was loose? You can fix the front, obviously, in a pit stop with front wing. How do you fix the rear? Well, the, uh, the, reason, the reason it's loose is because it's pushing so much that it's just scrubbing, it's scrubbing the, the front tires. So then that, in turn, at, it comes to a point where it wants to, makes it once the back end makes it I mean makes their back end come around so um, it's it's really tough out there because then all, it gets to a point where the whole car is just you know understeer then the rear goes and they understeer again and it's uh, it was just not fun at the beginning you said not fun but you've got to be pleased with a fourth place finish considering you did have to battle that much in the beginning I, I think fourth place you know you always want to be on the podium but fourth place is very good for us we did a uh, good points yeah we're battling for the top spots in the championship in the points and um, uh, I think uh, fourth is good for us. We still have three races to go, and there's a lot we can accomplish. And, of course, the big one in Mexico City. I guess we'll see you there after a couple overseas. Exactly. I want to get there in uh, very good very good in the point standing so uh, that my countrymen have something to cheer for. All right. Thanks, Mario. Thank you. Guys. Let's get to Chris McClure. Fifth place as we turn to my right, Rodolfo Levine. Rodolfo, you had a problem the first day with the gearbox. Then you hit the wall, had to change cars. Didn't know about the motor earlier today, and now you're in fifth place. That's a pretty good uh, weekend's work. Yeah, definitely a great result for my team from HVM. You know, Michael Cannon did a great job on the on the car. 
obviously uh, thanks to Corona because then I'm here and uh, obviously we got a very very tough weekend we uh, we got a very bad uh, first practice we didn't run at all we qualified seven which wasn't that bad and then uh, second practice I hit the wall pretty big and uh, this morning we had a very big uh, problem with the engine wasn't uh, pulling right and uh, so we went out to the race just like uh, guessing how the car was gonna be you know but at the end the car was uh, okay I was fighting with the rear a lot the whole race it was oversteering too much but at the end uh, fifth place I think is very good it's uh, two, two, two top five in, in only four races so I think it's pretty good for the team for Corona for me congratulations thank you he overcame more than that by the way he had no radio the second half of the race but they were able to accomplish the pit stops anyway you're in Vertheim, he was next in line good solid run for you first time on a track like this you adapted very quickly how'd that happen yeah, I mean, uh, the liquid molecular car has been fantastic all week and uh, qualified well. And uh, during the first hit, we were able to keep up with the leaders. And uh, my plan was just to stay behind them and, and try to, you know, not use any push to pass and save it for the end of the race. But uh, there was uh, a problem during our first stop, which uh, left us a half a lap behind. Uh, the air jack uh, wasn't working properly. Uh, so, you know, it, I'm, you know, it's a good result since it's my first time uh, here on a Super Oval, but I'm actually really disappointed because that cost us a shot on uh, on a podium. podium. Yeah, well, and it was an air jack failure, fellas, by the way, and they really believe it cost them a podium, and that may well be the case. But congratulations anyway. It cost us a shot at the podium at least. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Rick? All right, Bjorn Verdheim in what could have been his final ride of the season in the champ car, hoping to round up the funding to continue and finish the final three races. We'll be back with more from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We are about to enjoy some champagne here in Las Vegas. And of course, yes, as usual, the drivers like to soak themselves first. What a time of celebration for Bourdais in somewhat controversial situation that we will get to discuss a little bit later on, but Bourdais sees it from his side. We heard what Jerry Forsyth said earlier on. We heard what Carl Haas said earlier on. I'm sure there are many sides to this argument. And uh, we will probably end up, uh, no matter what decision is made, that uh, somebody will still have a different opinion. It'll be a discussion, I'm sure, for quite some time among the teams at the very least. But Sebastian Bourdais with the victory here tonight, second consecutive time at Las Vegas. And we're joined by the Champ Car Vice President of Operations Race Director, Tony Common. Thanks for taking time to come and see us. And you've been embroiled in a little discussion about what happened between Bourdais and Tracy. Hot Tell seas. us about it. Well, the calls don't get any easier, do they? <laughs> and, Definitely uh, not. You know, the way I saw it is uh, Tracy had come off two there with Bourdais and moved out uh, in front of Bourdais, coming down the back stretch. And Paul was actually intending on pitting that lap. And I made it very clear in the driver's meeting that you need to make your intentions clear by putting two wheels under the white line down the back stretch, which Paul did not do. And um, from my perspective, they both went into uh, the next corner. Paul was intending on pitting. Sebastian had no idea and ended up taking them out. Have you given that point of view to Jerry Forsythe? Yes, I have. And? Uh, we had a uh, pretty good discussion. And uh, as we see right here on the, on the TV, uh, I, to me, it was very clear that uh, Paul was going to pit did not make his run into the pit lane until very late and uh, paid the price. Will there be an official protest, do you believe? Uh, I don't believe so, but, uh, you know, I'm on my way back to the trailer now to see what's happening. All right. Well, Tony Cummins, thanks for taking time to, to talk to us about that. A very difficult uh, decision, I'm sure, but pretty clear cut in your eyes. We appreciate it. Thanks very much. All right. Let's get downstairs and hear more post-race festivities in Vegas. Here's John. And from a different perspective with Joe Barbieri, of course, of Bridgestone. Sometimes we talk to you about tires. We're going to switch gears, talk about hurricane relief. First of all, how did it impact Bridgestone and your businesses? Well, obviously, it was a very devastating situation for everybody. Uh, for Bridgestone Associates, we had probably 18 or so company-owned stores within that area that were devastated. Some of them just totally wiped out. A lot of our associate teammates uh, lost their homes and stuff. So uh, it was tough for everybody. Tell us about the efforts as far as this race and Bridgestone. Bridgestone's efforts and what you've been able to do for those folks. Well, our, our, our Bridgestone Corporation stood right up and, and donated a million dollars. Uh, for our uh, local people there in Nashville, we actually had things from, from cook bake sales to earn like $3,000, all the way up to where we actually went out to a Titans game, volunteered with the Red Cross to collect money and also to do a blood drive. So we were quite involved. Thank you so much and thank you for the contributions. 
Joe Barbieri of Bridgestone Firestone. Victory Lane ceremonies continue. We'll be right back. Al Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by four. The Champ Car Hurricane Relief 400 at Las Vegas complete. Bourdais is the winner for the fifth time this season. Oriole Servia comes home second. Vassar, Dominguez, and Rodolfo Levine, your top five. Verdheim with a nice sixth. Championship. Bourdais takes even further command over Servia. He's got almost a 70 point lead over Oriole Servia with three rounds to go. Tracy third, just ahead of Justin Wilson. We are back next with you on Sunday, October the 16th. Champ Car heads overseas for the balance. Of 2005, the first ever trip to Ansan, Korea for round 12. A Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. It's the Champ Car Grand Prix of Korea. Our coverage at 11 o'clock Eastern Time on Sunday, the 16th, right here on Speed. Next up on Speed, MotoGP action from Malaysia, the Malaysian Grand Prix. For Derek Daly, Jan Vikas, and Chris McClure, I'm Rick Benjamin congratulating Sebastian Bourdais. So long. Thanks for watching from Las Vegas, Nevada.